a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. And this one is part two. Removing the boiler back head fittings and the firebox cladding. I had to re-record the first part of this voiceover because the original one sounded like this. Welcome to part two of a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive where I have to remove the boiler back head fittings and the firebox cladding. This is a difficult job and I'm so depressed. <laughs> where did I put my Stanley knife? <laughs> and yes, it was this bad, so I pulled myself together, made a long telephone call to my therapist, and then just got on with it. The first part of the job is to slacken this bolt underneath to remove the ring that's purely cosmetic but looks good around the firebox. I've found a suitable cardboard box to put most of the parts in. It's not really big enough, but it will have to do. The first part to go in the box is one of the water gauge blowdown pipes, closely followed by this cosmetic ring. Underneath the cladding and the ring itself is another ring. It's a steel ring with a link in it, a nice touch. And because of the wire loop in it, it was very easy to leave it out of the way. This secondary ring is very much a belt and braces approach, and I think it's a good idea. And that is the next thing to go in the cardboard box. But because of its weight, I put it underneath the decorative ring. This is the regulator. I need to remove the lever, and in order to do that, I have to take part of the frame off. Despite removing the frame, the handle didn't want to part company with the shaft, but with the help of a screwdriver for a bit of leverage, it came away easily. After removing the lever, I replaced the quadrant. For obvious reasons, I didn't want to lose it. I need a secondary box for the smaller parts, and here it is. It's a good idea when dismantling things to take a photograph of them first. I don't need to do that for two reasons. One is I'm videoing the entire process, and the second reason is I do have a photographic memory. Believe me, this is not a joke. I can even remember being potty trained. I think my brain is just a tiny bit abnormal, like in the film Jung Frankenstein. The regulator is held to the back head with some normal steel Allen caphead bolts. Looking at these made me make a mental note. If I put this back together, I'm going to use stainless caphead bolts. That way the rust will only be on the boiler, not on the bolts. Which means that with a bit of luck, if the regulator ever needs removing at a future time, it will come away easily. At this stage, for a brief moment in time, I was hoping there would be some sort of a serial number or maker's name underneath the regulator, but no such luck. Normally, with a silver-soldered copper boiler, there are bushes fitted to accommodate any bolts that need to be bolted to the boiler, but this is not the case with this steel boiler. This is a really nice design of this type of regulator. It uses two silicone O-rings, which ensures a perfect seal between the regulator body and the back head itself. The regulator went into the cardboard box with the other parts. Now it's time to dismantle the water gauges. I do not intend to use these, because they are not of the three-cock type, which allows isolation if the glass gets broken. Anticipating putting this back together, I've already sourced some of these. They are of extremely good quality, but unfortunately not cheap. Once I remove the water gauge glass, you can clearly see the number stamped on the boiler, 9455. But so far, I've drawn a blank. Looking at this boiler, I'm pretty sure that it was professionally made, but not by one of the model boiler maker specialists. It's a good time to see what the thread forms are on the part of the water gauge that fits into the boiler. When I try a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch union nut on there, it's obvious that that is not the correct thread. The diameter of it, though, is 3 8 of an inch. I know what the thread is, I can see it very clearly, and here, stuck in the hole, finger tight, is a 1 8 BSP tap. BSP stands for British Standard Pipe. It's not a thread I use very often, I generally use ME threads, and a 1 8 BSP thread has 28 threads per inch. Time now to remove the other water gauge. I've increased the speed of the video just to get through it in a reasonable time. The bottom fitting of this water gauge wasn't in the correct position, and this became apparent when I removed the glass. It was broken. There are two things that are really essential when you're working with water gauges. 
make sure the fittings are in line and do not over tighten the gland nuts, otherwise you will break the glass like this or worse. I temporarily refitted the bolts to the back head that held the regulator in place. You may notice I've removed the fire grate assembly. This next bit I'm not looking forward to. The turret can't be removed until I remove the safety valves. The first of the safety valve extension pipes came away quite easily. The second one was very tight, but as you can see clearly, the second one put up a bit of a fight. But eventually it gave in. The next part of the job is to disconnect all piping to and from the turret. When the engine finally goes back together, I will modify the turret so that it uses standard valves. This very randomly bent piece of pipe is the one that supplies steam from the turret to the whistle on the front of the cab. Thankfully, that came away without event. And now it's fun time. I can't remove the turret until I remove the safety valves. And before I start, I would just like to show the fact that the safety valve body is marked before I put my adjustable spanner on it. And by adjustable spanner, I refer to my Barco adjustable spanner, which does not damage the part it is either tightening or slackening. Removing this first safety valve really took a long time. The second one was a bit easier to get to and not quite as tight. With both of the safety valves out of the way, I can simply rotate the turret to remove it from the bush in the boiler. All major inlets to this boiler are fitted with proper bushes. The only ones that weren't were the ones for the water gauges. The next part of the job should be simple. The firebox cladding is in two halves, so it should come away quite easily, especially after unscrewing the blowdown valve underneath. I slowed down this clip just to show that when I shook the blowdown valve, not much rust came out of it, and I really was hoping that water wouldn't come out. Surprisingly, this cladding did not come away quite as easily as I thought it would. But after wrestling with it for a while, it suddenly gave way. I didn't put this firebox cladding in the cardboard box because it's too big. I put it on the floor at the side of the box. And wait, yes, yes, what's this? There are some other marks on the boiler, TP200 and WP100. Does this mean that this boiler was built by the late writer Terry Pratchett? Well, no, it doesn't. Believe it or not, I must have been having a stupid moment because I did not initially get the TP, which of course stands for test pressure, and WP stands for working pressure. So its working pressure is 100 pounds per square inch, and the test pressure is twice that. Initially, the owner of the engine said he was going to scrap this boiler and have a new one made, but then I received a call from him because he'd been speaking to a professional boiler tester who tests full-size steam locomotive boilers. I'm told that this boiler tester will both test and certify this boiler, provided it is fitted with something called a fusible plug. Now the plan is for me to remove the boiler entirely, and the owner will pick up the boiler, take it away and fit a fusible plug, and then drop it off with the boiler tester. And if this boiler passes the scientific tests, as well as the pressure test, it will be issued with a valid certificate. What I need to do is remove the boiler completely from the frames. And I will start that in the next episode. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.